Well, I, I decided to support the campaign because I think increasingly in terms of healthcare policy, we're hearing about the need for people to take responsibility for their health care. We're hearing concerns about people who are not compliant with their medication or their health care regime. And you begin to feel, well, all of this is telling people what they should be doing. Where are the, where's the voice of the people who are also engaged in this process? Patients are not sort of passive individuals to whom things happen. They're, they're active people. They're people who are actively, should be actively engaged within determining their own health care. I think at the EU level, if we're looking at how do we have a patient's perspective, I think it, we need to be very clear about what the engagement is to involve civil society and at what points in the decision making. So we, it isn't just a question either of what's happening in the Environment and Public Health Committee it's also what's happening in the Social Affairs Committee, a whole, the Women's Rights Committee, a whole set of different organ, parts of the, the Parliament at least, who are also engaged within this, as well as what the Commission does in terms of its consultations. So I think we need some clear rules about how people are involved to ensure, to check that we are actually hearing the voices of those most intimately engaged in many of the decisions that are being made to look at what are we doing with some of our research programs to make sure that those also are hearing the voice of the patient within them. And I think there's also a role for member states, who after all are decision makers within what happens at the European Union, to also consider how they are going to hear patients' voices when they are determining EU policies. I mean, in theory, the European Union does not have so much to do with delivery of health care, whereas, in fact, we've certainly seen uh, in a lot of the measures that have been advised, that have been pushed for in terms of the economic crisis, those have had a real impact on health care delivery per se, whether that's concerns about cancer patients in Greece not being able to access medicines anymore, uh, a whole set of the, these sorts of issues. So. What the European Union is advising member states in terms of what works in budget terms, it's important. So I think one of the things that we ought to be doing is making sure that this so-called European semester process, where national governments are talking to the Commission about what are they doing with their budgets to make them more efficient, really has to have the impact on healthcare as a key part of that. There's also, I think, a lot that the European Union can be doing to actually assist member states as well in terms of things like the cost of drugs. That, you know, a lot of people feel that the pharmaceutical companies make a lot of profit out of the European Union countries and that therefore we could actually do something to really reduce the cost of drugs too, which is a major cost to healthcare systems. And then there's a whole set of other things that we're also doing in terms of whether it's active ageing policy, whether it's support for carers, a whole set of other policies that we have there where the European Union really should be making sure that patients are engaged in those decisions so that we make the right policies, the policies that really will work with the people for whom those policies are supposed to be designed. And therefore, it also stops us maybe making some really bad mistakes about what we think should be being provided in, rather than what it is that people really need to actually help improve their own quality of life, their own health care.